number of reasons, and we can't let this moment pass without acknowledging the contribution to broadcasting here on RTE of one John Giles, who called his last game for us tonight. In a way, John Giles, as you look at him on the screen, is representative of the origins of football, that period when scouts brought youngsters to England. And then, of course, the, 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 his father, who played for Bowes, and, uh, and his sons, who played for Shamrock Rovers. So he's really from the texture of the league. He has represented the best of the game in its roots, uh, in its performance, in its service to, um, to the game at home and abroad and throughout the country. I so wish him well. Their league, as you saw it, wasn't a very expressive league at all. Yeah, fact, we, the we were there, and I must say, the manager at the time of the Irish team dropped me uh, for all the games drop, on the South American tour. I never dropped him, but I never had him in the first place. <laughs> if the central defence had done the job properly, you don't need an extra man to help them. I think you should have more sense and just keep it. Twitters to himself. Johnny Giles, Johnny Giles, one, two, Dunky again. The glib phrases that seem to work best on this medium of television won't really do to introduce my next guest, Mr. John Giles. Johnny Giles, thanks for coming in. I got a gentleman standing up for me. Standing up for me, is that yeah, yeah, worthy? If, you had, if everybody's a cat cat, it wouldn't matter if he was playing with a with a with a with a turn up bill. <laughs> now, you just hold it there. You can see. You can see here when leaning on to without giving a penalty kick or a free kick away. You run on and it shows good balance, good strength to get that little touch. And then we've got touches like that all the time for about four or five times yeah. in the second half. Would he kill his granny? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> would he kill his granny? Yeah. And Bobby Collins would kill his granny All right. and his grandfather. Okay, so what we're to, seeing to, to win a match. The goalkeepers are you know, the best goalkeepers are usually very brave. Yeah. Usually yeah. no cases really the goalkeepers. Yeah. John will probably highlight a few a few occasions where he hasn't done all that all that well. But to my chance point of view, your point of view, you think right. he's a good player? I, I think he's done well. Welcome back. We go now to our panel for uh, discussion. And John Giles, let's start with you. I'm told that you were known as Gentleman John because of your 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 your, your courteous way of playing. <laughs> 63 did have its, its high point. It was the year that you got married. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was the year we won the cup. <laughs> Most wingers are, are a bit brainless, but there's, there's, there's some good ones as well. You, you, you can tell by his face he's a bit of a, a, bit of a headbanger. And, uh, like, How can you tell by his face? Ah, he's just, he's all attitude. I'd like to thank the lads, John, Ray and Eamon. The, the pyramids along the night. See the sunrise on a tropic island. Just remember that all the well, like him. you belong to me. John, uh, an emotional night. It's been some journey over 30 years, huh? Apart from singing, Darren. <laughs> You're a great singer. I love your singing. It was, it was okay. Yeah, oh yeah, it's... it's now they say when you're enjoying yourself, the time flies, start, and the time has has definitely flown. Uh, you know, it was great, thirty years. Uh, it's taken actually thirty years to find me out, and that's uh, I'm not too, I wouldn't be too unhappy about that. And Eamon is to blame. Eamon was was responsible for for me coming on the program in the in, in the first place, along with with uh, ex head of sports Tim O'Connor, the late Tim O'Connor, and then Liam came in later on. Uh, uh, Bill, of course, was, was there originally, and yourself, Dan, are coming in. No, I've really enjoyed it. It's been it's been great. Time has flown, but uh, it's been very, very enjoyable. Eamon, I mean, your idea? Um, my idea is this. There'll be no past tense here, um, because John's career has been, is brilliant, and his greatness is due to his courage and his foresight and his wisdom. Jim referred to it there at the end of the game. He had the wisdom to leave Manchester United when they were a top club in England, to go to Leeds United in the second division of the championship, 
to believe in Don Revy, who was building a great team, which John partly led and largely led. Intellectually, he, he, he knew that was the time. And he, he went on to manage West Brom. Don Revy wanted him to succeed him at Leeds as the manager. Bill Nicholson wanted him to succeed him at Tottenham as the coach. He went on to manage West Brom. One promotion, fifth in the, what is now the Premier League. The hottest young manager in England. He walked away from the game because he didn't like the way it was run. Responsibility without power. Managed the Irish team. Changed the culture over seven years. Gave Liam, Mark Lawrence and all these great players their debut. Changed it forever. Came home to try and create a great club of Shamrock Rovers. Brave, courageous, foresight. It's always been his hallmark. And in the 30 years he sat in that chair, if any of these kids out there wonder, who's that guy? That guy is the greatest football man we've ever had and has nearly ever been in these islands. And it's going to go on. For the Herald and for News Talk, I'd be tuning in. I'd be buying the Herald. He's a great, great friend of all of us. A joy to work with. And a great, great figure in the history of Irish sport, the soccer's man. Beautifully put, beautifully put. Uh, Liam, you, you've known John such a long time, you're, you're playing days and further back. Yeah, I met John when I was 17, I was playing as a kid for Arsenal uh, against Leeds, and that's when I first met him, he had a word with me after the game, he knew where I was from, he was the Irish manager then, I played for him, I played with him, great player to play with, and a great manager to play for. Um, his opinions as a pundit, I've never been comprom compromised by reputation of managers, by reputation of players. He's always called it, as he sees it, with honesty and with integrity and with no fear. And I've learned an enormous lot from him about football and about life. And I will carry on learning, because we were out on Friday night <laughs> and we shall be out again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you, Liam. Thank you. <laughs> John, we miss you. Oh, thank you, Barry. I'll have to say, well, I miss you as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to say that. No, no, it's, it's been great. It's been great working with the lads. Yeah, yeah it's been, listen, it's been an honour to know you and to work with you. And thank, thank you, you for everything. Um, that's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is where we are going to leave it. We're out of time on this programme. The highlights are next. My thanks to Eamon, to Liam, and of course to John for joining me throughout this evening and throughout the tournament. It's Portugal who are the champions of Europe for 2016. Thanks for watching. Good night.